Okay, we'll go ahead and give it just another minute before we get started. Welcome everybody and thank you so much for coming. We're excited to get the Let's Talk About Summer Wellbeing event started in just a moment once we get everybody in here and allow everybody to join. We'll get started in just a moment. Again, if you're here, we'd love to see where you're joining in from. Feel free to post in the in the chat where you're joining in from. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Again, thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Um, welcome. We're really excited to be here at the Let's Talk About Summer Wellbeing event. Um, we'll start off by introducing our speakers of the of the day. Um, I'm Megan Irwine. I'm the registered dietitian nutritionist at Let's Get Checked. Um, here, I support our customers to help them reach their health goals through nutrition and lifestyle intervention. The majority of my career has really been focused on health promotion, chronic disease prevention, and overall well-being. So I'm really excited uh, to talk to you tonight about uh, well-being and how you can uh, learn some tips on better wellness. And I'm also joined with uh, with me is Sophie Jaffe. She is in LA, so the other side. I'm in Florida. She's in LA, the other side of the co or the other coast. Um, she is a health and wellness expert, superfood entrepreneur, and a co-host of the IGNTD podcast. She's a yoga teacher and a mother to three beautiful children. Sophie founded her own superfood company and wellness brand. Uh, it's called Philosophy super clever. And we're going to learn a little bit more about um, her brand as well. She's very well um, uh, learned in, in the wellness uh, arena, and we're excited to have her along as well. All right. So anybody else just joining in, go ahead and feel free to drop in the chat where you're from. Love to know where everybody's joining in from. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of background on who's let's let's get checked and what we're all about. So we're a global healthcare solutions company that gives you tools to conveniently manage your health from home. We offer at-home diagnostics, virtual care, and pharmacy for a wide range of health conditions. We um, offer over 30 different at-home tests across different categories, including wellness, um, sexual health, men's health, and women's health. Okay. okay, so with tonight's session, what we'll be talking about is wellness, obviously, um, and what, what it all entails. Uh, we're going to be talking about seasonal eating and superfoods and how they support well-being. Uh, we're going to talk about some great health hacks to share with you and that you can share with your family and your loved ones. Um, we're going to be talking about staying healthy as the seasons transition. I think we all kind of towards the end of one season, look forward to the next season. Um, and so we can stay, stay nice and healthy as we transition. Um, and we can also talk a little bit about what we can do to be proactive with our overall well-being. Um, now, please keep in mind that this session is intended to be interactive. So please use this chat feature um, box for any questions that you might have or any comments that you want to make along the way. We'll do our best to answer them as we go through. Um, and we'll certainly save some time at the end of our session tonight um, to take some of those questions as well. All right, so let's start talking about wellness here. Um, what is wellness and what does it entail? So I think depending on who, who is defining wellness, it might mean uh, something different for everybody. And to me, wellness is just much more than being healthy um, or being free of disease. To me, wellness is much more comprehensive um, and really focuses on the whole person. Um, so, you know, looking at some of these um, examples that are here on the slide, like social connectedness, interacting with others, connecting with your friends, your family, your loved ones, people that you feel belonging and connected to. Um, and that can even be, your, you know, your, your pets and your fur babies. Um, 
Something else that's a part of well-being, a huge pillar is rest and relaxation and reducing stress, um, getting good quality sleep, not only getting sleep, but getting good quality sleep is so incredibly important. Um, getting active. We know that being active is important and uh, is very much a part of well-being, but not only being physically active, but also mentally active. We know that the mind and the body are so intimately connected um, and that a strong mind equals, uh, equals a strong body and vice versa. So we need to be active with both our mind and our bodies. And another pillar, um, bias, one of my favorite pillars, because I am a dietitian, but is eating well. Um, and with working with a dietitian, you know, I never want my customers and my clients to feel like I'm going to be taking away all their foods. That's not what it's about. Um, it's all about looking at ways that we can add foods to your diet instead of taking them away. And that's really what we'll be focusing on tonight um, is different things that we can add to our diet um, to help aid in overall wellness. Okay, so let's take a closer look at some of those different pillars um, that of, of wellness um, that we have. So first is physical wellness. I feel like that's kind of obvious as far as when we're talking about health and wellness, um, that physical wellness, moving your body. Um, you know, we get a lot done while we're sitting down and, you know, we might not, um, you know, we don't necessarily want to think of physical wellness as vigorous exercise that's so difficult, that seems so overwhelming and I'm unable to commit to, but maybe just moving your body a little bit more often. Um, like I said, not sitting so much. We get a whole lot done while we're sitting down. Um, maybe we can try to sit less and move a little bit more throughout our day, do some different things like folding the laundry, standing up, making phone calls throughout the day, standing up. Any kind of um, way that we can move our body um, is a great way to focus on physical wellness. We also want to choose foods that nourish our bodies, and we'll be diving pretty deep into this tonight. Um, so I'll save some more information for that in a bit. Um, and you know, absolutely managing any health conditions that we may be that we may be having, um, and making sure that we're trying to keep illness at bay. Now, emotional wellness. Uh, this is a bit. This is a big one as well um, when we're looking at those pillars of wellness. So, our emotional wellness. I think we can all agree that we have different stresses throughout the day. There's different times where we're feeling anxiety, um, and really helping to identify those triggers um, will and, and will help us understand how we can best cope with them. We know that it's unrealistic to completely wipe away all of our stressors and all of our things that cause us cause us anxiety, um, but learning what is actually behind that and learning how to cope with it is so incredibly, incredibly important to help with your emotional wellness. Um, one thing is that deep breathing that the slide mentions here. Deep breathing is a quick and easy way to help de-stress and help relieve anxiety. Another one that's one of my favorites is smiling. Um, so research actually shows us that even a fake smile can send all those same happy hormones to your brain and put you in a better mood, which is absolutely um, great. So even if you're not feeling so great and you can get yourself to, to get a little smile, even if it's a fake smile, it can still get you to that better part as far as your mental and emotional health and well-being is concerned. Um, and, you know, smiling is absolutely contagious. As I smile here, I'm hoping that it's spreading to you all and you all are smiling, smiling as well. Um, let's see, social wellness. So uh, social wellness um, is all about, you know, your, your network, your, your people that you connect with, your family, your friends, like I mentioned, your fur babies. Uh, I think this is one that we can all really connect to, um, really hit home with us during the pandemic, not having, not being able to kind of be as, social as we had been and really missing that aspect of our well-being. And I know it really played a tool on a lot on a lot of people. And that just goes to show how important that social wellness is um, for our overall well-being. Okay, so a couple more uh, pillars of well-being that we can go through. Now, those first two, practicing gratitude and positive outlook, I feel like they really do go hand in hand. Um, practicing outlook really allows us to focus on um, the positive while we're working through the negatives. Again, you know, there's no way to completely outroll those negatives, um, but practicing gratitude puts that energy into the positive as we work through some of those negatives. 
and a positive outlook. You know, that's really your, your general attitude. How are you deciding to, um, how are you deciding to perceive the things that are around you and in our everyday lives in, in our world. Um, really looking in the mirror every morning and telling yourself how great you are, even if you aren't believing it at that moment or you're not feeling all so great, can really help um, uh, with those behaviors and affect more positively. Um, really practicing positive self-talk is a great way that we can improve that, um, that positive outlook and our general attitude. Do you have a gratitude journal? Yes, I love gratitude journals. So I do a three day gratitude every once in a while. I'll revisit what those three things are. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's the basic things like my friends and my family and my health and other things. It's like the sunshine or it didn't rain today or I got out of the house on time. You know, there's lots of things that I think we can find uh, gratitude in. What about you? Yeah. I mean, I, it's funny. Anytime I feel like I'm in a funk, I come back to a gratitude. I'll either do it in my head or I'll um, maybe when I'm trying to go to bed and I feel anxious, I'll try and list 10 things that I feel really grateful for in that moment. Um, and my husband does like a daily gratitude journal every single morning and that keeps him really grounded. But for me, it's more like when I feel like I need it, mm -hmm. I have yeah. a pretty positive outlook to begin with. But when I feel like I'm not doing well, then it helps me to ground back into reality. Yeah. I love that. I love different ways of being able to, to apply that. That's awesome. Um, and then your environment. So I think a lot of times when we talk about environment, we think of like our larger environment, things maybe we don't have much control of, like air quality. Um, but even taking a closer look at our immediate environment, um, bringing in colors of, of nature. Um, the slide here says uh, about bringing in house plants to your bedroom and your living space, which is an amazing idea. Um, but what we're doing is bringing the colors of nature inside. And those colors of nature have been known to de-stress and um, calm us and just help us with our overall well-being. Um, even scents, you know, there are scents like lavender and vanilla um, that really help to stress us as well. Um, what else? Keeping your workspace tidy. That's a big one for me. <laughs> the better I'm organized, the, the more um, I feel better about my, my immediate environment. Um, anything else you want to add, Sophie? That decluttering for me is huge, like getting rid of things that I don't really need. Um, things that maybe have an energetic tie to something from my past or um, like just dead weight or just something from like last season or, you know, piles of things or junk drawers, like just things that add clutter to my brain mm -hmm. um, just by being in my environment. It affects me very strongly. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. So I just want, um, you know, us all to be kind of on the same page when we talk about wellness or overall well-being. We're not just talking about being healthy. There's so many different pillars. We're going to focus a lot on nutrition today and some of those other areas. Um, but, you know, if one of these kind of resonated with you, I definitely encourage you to kind of focus there as you start your journey off to wellness as well. All right. So I know we're having a little trouble with the chat feature. Um, so we're going to give this a try. Um, but this is a true or false that I'll ask our participants to participate in by using the chat and answer whether true or false you think these statements are correct. Um, so the first one is true or false. Adults should do at least 30 minutes of physical activity a day. Let's see if we can get any of the responses in. Okay. I see a true. Okay. So that one is pretty true. We do need to move our bodies each and every day. Um, you know, the goal at a minimum is about two and a half hours uh, per week, two and a half hours per week. I don't want you to hear per day. Um, it's really what our, what our minimum goal is um, to get that benefit from physical activity. Okay, number two, I think the chat is still down. So we'll just kind of move through this. Uh, number two, you should be drinking one gallon of water a day. And that one's going to be false. Um, not everybody needs to be drinking one gallon of water a day. That might be a lot of water for some people. Um, a good rule of thumb that I like to use is half your body weight in ounces. I know there's lots of different um, rules of thumb out there, but that seems to be an easy one that is achievable for a lot of people. Yeah. And then do you also add um, like 
that's like on a normal day. But then if you work out adding more because of all the sweat, right? Yep. Absolutely. hundred percent. You got to listen to your body for sure. All right. Um, you only need to wear sunscreen when the sun is out shining. Nope. No, that's a false. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's a false one. And juice cleanses are a great way to detox your body. Not on their own. Not on their own, right? We really want to focus on eating whole foods, uh, less processed foods. There's a group of vegetables out there called cruciferous vegetables, and those are really great at detoxing our liver and helping us detox naturally. Um, For those of you that are curious what a cruciferous vegetable is, it's things like cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, all those good ones. Okay. All right, so let's jump into our seasonal eating and super bo- superfoods um, information. So let's see, seasonal eating not only benefits the environment, but it benefits your body. Um, eating foods that are grown during the season really helps bring out their health benefits. Um, seasonal eating also means superfoods. So these are especially um considered especially beneficial to our health and even more favorable when in season because they are full of nutrients. And when they're in season, they're even, those nutrients are even more prominent. Um, There are nutrients like fiber and vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and all these um, nutrients together collectively, um, they decrease inflammation and they help improve our overall health and well-being. Um, So when we're doing the superfoods seasonally, then Mm -hmm. we get even more of a bang for our buck. Yeah. Yeah. They're just much more nutritionally dense also. So you can eat less of them, like the equivalent of like 20 oranges. We typically don't sit down and have 20 oranges, but if you just have a tablespoon of camu camu powder, then you can get that a same amount of vitamin C. Of the vitamin C. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a great point is even just, you can kind of use those terms interchangeably nutrient dense and superfoods. Cause that's yeah. really what we're looking for. Exactly. Okay. All right. So um, looking a little bit further into the seasonal eating, some of those benefits. Um, so like we just talked about, they're much more nutritionally dense. Um, they taste better for sure. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. We know mm-hmm. if we're picking something right from the farm, how much better it tastes than um, we're picking it up at the at the grocery store. Um, and, you know, I also like to focus on that, that locally grown. That's so important. Um, when we look at produce, our produce typically travels over 3000 miles from farm Mm. plate. And during that journey, you guessed it, it's depleting all that nutrients that, um, that it's losing along the way. Um, so here in Florida, I'm going to choose the Florida strawberries and out in California, Sophie, I'm sure you're going to be choosing those California strawberries. Um, and that's going to be a huge difference. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a huge difference, not only with taste, but nutritionally. So um, not saying that when we talk about local, not saying that it has to be, you know, coming from your local farmer that's down the street, but any as close as you can get it to you. Um, so maybe that's a couple of states away rather than a couple of countries away. Um, and that means better tasting. And that means that it's definitely going to have more nutrition to it as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the truth behind superfoods, um, is it just another wellness myth or is there something behind it? Um, Even though there's not necessarily a scientific definition behind the word superfood, like we just talked about, it really can be used interchangeably with nutrient dense because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those high levels of those important nutrients, some of which I just mentioned, um, and really offering health benefits beyond the, the nutritional value that the food has. Um, So looking at some examples here, things like berries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, all berries are great. Uh, Leafy greens, the typical things like spinach and kale and or maybe not so typical like dandelion and mustard greens, but we're all looking at dark green color or the vibrant colors of those berries. And what that is, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, they're called flavonoids. Um, so maybe that's adding a new word to, to the attendees vocabulary, but flavonoids are, are what give produce their color. And those flavonoids um, are anti-inflammatory properties. They protect our cells um, from oxidative damage. Um, so that really helps prevent the development of chronic disease, um, as well as Alzheimer's and dementia. And we're learning more and more and more about their protective benefits. Um, so those colors, anything 
naturally vibrant in color is what is going to provide those flavonoids and provide all those anti-inflammatories. Um, there's a ton of superfoods out there and some maybe that aren't so typical that you see in all your grocery stores, um, but things like ginger, fermented foods, um, spirulina is another good one. I'm sure you have some in your, in your line, Sophie. Yes, I do. Yeah. I have a superfood line. I was going to say, um, really focusing one thing that worked for me when I was coming out of like disordered eating in my early twenties, where I was just like kind of obsessed with the wrong things, um, was focusing on colors. So like trying to get as many colors as I could get in every single day. And I think that's a really easy way for kids and adults to just mm -hmm. like take away the guessing. Like if you're getting as many colors as you can in a given day from natural foods, then you're, you're on your right, you're on the right track. Absolutely. And the key is those natural foods, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want like blue number 40. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And salmon. So we'll focus a lot more on those, on those plant-based foods, but salmon is actually considered a very nutrient dense superfood as well. Um, there's some great key nutrients in there. Selenium, which is amazing for thyroid and reproductive health. Um, obviously omega-3 fatty acids um, coming from salmon as well. That's a heart healthy fat for you. Um, it decreases inflammation. It also helps um, with brain health and obviously heart health as well. Um, so again, we're just looking for the biggest bang for our buck. These, uh, these foods, that really provide a lot of nutrients. They're very nutrient dense um, and that will provide that great health benefit for our overall wellness. Yeah, I find that chia seeds is a really good, like not substitute, but if you're like one day wanting to be more plant-based, we put chia seeds in two of my blends because I just love them so much. I love mm -hmm. like chia pudding and adding it to things. You can make a chia egg. Yep. Chia, seeds, chia seeds are so good and, um, and they're versatile. Good if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're versatile. You can definitely do a lot with them. Okay, so these are some of the superfoods that are in season that you might find at your local farmer's market um, or notice um, that they're a little bit more prominent in your grocery store. Um, again, focusing on those berries, blueberries, strawberries, um, peppers, uh, zucchini. I think at this point, a lot of people have zucchini kind of growing out of their gardens like crazy and they don't know what to do with it. There's lots of amazing things you can do with zucchini, um, very nutrient dense, uh, tomatoes and peas. Those are all superfoods that are in, uh, that are in season. Um, and there's lots of creative ways that you can use them. Um, you have any ideas, Sophie? For peas? For any of them. Oh yeah. I mean, I just love using them in, um, a lot of these vegetables and like stir fries, but then also things like zucchini because it's a neutral flavor. I'll add it to like our oatmeal in the morning or um, make like zucchini patties out of it or um, eat them. You can make them into noodles if you make them into zoodles and just mm -hmm. and like thinly um, chop them. So yeah, there's so many fun versatile ways. I love having like any types of blueberries, strawberries, anything like that. I just throw in a smoothie. You can also freeze zucchini and throw it in a smoothie and then it adds more nutrients and also makes it really, um, uh, creamy. what's the word? What? Creamy? Yeah, like super creamy and just like icy and milkshakey. And you can do the same thing with cauliflower. Yep, I love that. Great ideas. And that's uh, freezing anything. Um, you know, that will hold the nutrient density. So the nutrients aren't going to be leaking out. Once you freeze it, it keeps it, it keeps it that superfood. So even if you um, feel like it's been in your fridge a little bit too long, go ahead and throw it in the freezer and you can pull it back out for like a smoothie, like you said. Um, some of these uh, summer vegetables are great to add to eggs or a quinoa salad, um, you know, fruit, you can always top, have as a snack, a handful of fruit as a snack or top some Greek yogurt with it. So yeah. lots of ways that we can just what, what are we currently eating and how can we add these foods on top of it is a great way and a great approach to get more superfoods in. Okay, so all of these superfoods also promote good gut health. Um, so gut health is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, and what we're what we're talking about here is your is your micro is your gut microbiome. Um, so your gut microbiome, your gut consists of good bacteria and potentially harmful bacteria. And all we want to do is kind of maintain that gut health at a good balance. We want to maintain that bacteria at a good balance. Um, so uh, 
a diet that's high in fiber, a diet full of plants will really help create that, that balance that we're looking for in the gut. Um, there's uh, probiotics that um, maybe you have taken or considered taking, but you can really get the probiotics um, through foods as well. Uh, taking that foods first approach. There are some that are listed here. Kimchi, kombucha is another big one. Yogurt, tempeh. Um, those are all really, any fermented foods are a good way to get some great probiotics in. Um, and then to keep those probiotics active, that good bacteria active in your gut, you need to feed them and you feed those with prebiotics and prebiotics are pretty much anything with fiber. So any of those plant-based foods, um, asparagus is huge with prebiotics, bananas is huge, garlic, onions, um, even some uh, not produce uh, type of foods that are still whole, um, that are still plant-based like oats and barley, they are really good sources to keep that balance in check um, with for your gut health. Um, so on the flip of that, there's some lifestyle things that can interfere with our gut health that just aren't diet related, um, like poor sleep, obviously poor diet, too much stress, uh, lack of exercise, a lot of those pillars that we talked about earlier for the positive, if we're not achieving them can really impact our gut health. Um, and the reason that's important um, is because if our gut health is, is not within balance, then um, it's gonna affect our immunity. So good gut health promotes good, healthy immunity. Um, good gut health creates that environment for nutrient absorption. Um, so all very important things that kind of aid to our overall well-being. Um, so another reason to, to sneak in some more of those superfoods. Also being on too many antibiotics. Yeah. To try and other ways to heal before just immediately being like, oh, put me on more antibiotics if you feel like your body's off in some way. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. There's some medications that other medications as well. Good point. So again, talking about that plant power and how important it is. Um, I think we've all probably heard of that five a day slogan that's been around for a while, um, but the American Gut Project has found that 30 or more different plants a week um, really helps lead to that balance that we're looking for to, mo to promote good gut health. Um, I think we've probably talked about almost 30 <laughs> good different plants so far, and we'll continue to talk about more, um, but I don't want you to feel kind of overwhelmed by that number either. Um, it's more than just fruits and vegetables, you know, the, the nuts, the seeds, the chia seeds that you talked about, hemp seeds, any sort of whole grain, um, beans, um, again, eating the rainbow, the different colors that represents um, so much diversity that will help with the gut health as well. Um, so, you know, if that number kind of overwhelms you a little bit, just when you go to the grocery store next time, just kind of count how many plant-based foods do you have in your grocery cart um, and, and how many more would you need to set yourself up for a good week and focusing on that 30 different types for that week. All right, so moving on to some summer health hacks. So how to stay hydrated in the summer sun. I'm in Florida and it's really hot. So, so <laughs> hydration is definitely key uh, this time of year, but really all throughout the year. Um, we really want to make sure that we are staying hydrated um, for overall health and well-being. And so we feel good too. Uh, a lot of times um, when we are dehydrated, we're feeling fatigued, we're not feeling um, well at all, and we can't necessarily get through our day. And unfortunately, we re reach for caffeine instead of water. Um, so we want to stay ahead of that. Um, the first sign of dehydration is that feeling of thirst. So you want to try to stay ahead of that. Um, so a good way to start your day off is drinking a big tall glass of water first thing in the morning. Obviously we didn't drink anything while we were sleeping. So we want to start our day off with, um, uh, with something to, to, to drink some water first thing in the morning, carrying around a water bottle. Uh, if you have that water present with you, you're more likely to drink it. Um, I know that's huge for me. I have a 30 ounce that I, that I make sure is full every time I'm every, every, every day <laughs> I have it with me. Um, I, I certainly drink more than 30 ounces, but I need to have that with me to help promote it. And when I don't, it real I really feel a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, Another way is eating water rich foods, things like watermelon, cucumbers, tomatoes, those are going to help um, prevent dehydration for you. Um, and like I mentioned, caffeine unfortunately dehydrates us as well as alcohol um, is going to interfere, interfere with our hydration levels as well. 
So don't necessarily count those in your water goals. Um, but there are lots of ways that we can, um, you know, regular old water just doesn't do it for you. There's other ways like infused waters. One of my favorites is ginger and orange slices. It's tasty and certainly helps me drink more. Um, and those are a couple good superfoods for you. <laughs> you have any Sophie that you like? Yeah, I add water supplements, my water every day and I have a product called sunshine drops and I add it every single day to my water. And if I don't have it, I can feel it. I'm just like, oh, I haven't had it in a few days. Like it definitely, it encourages me to drink more water because it tastes good and it's fun and green. Mm -hmm. um, but then also I just, I, I notice the difference from the chlorophyll too and the men. What's in the, um, what are in the drops? Um, it's just like a very concentrated chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. And then um, peppermint oil. So uh, like mint for, for consuming, but it's really nice. I just add like a few drops to my water, like a few times a day or at least once. And my kids even like it. It's just like a fun thing to like yeah. add. Um, I also have a product called Hydrating Dream and it's dehydrated coconut water with our green dream powder. So it's like got spirulina in it and all this stuff. So like if I feel really dehydrated after a hike or being out in the mm -hmm. sun all day, I'll just add that to my water and it makes such a difference. Also great for a hangover because <laughs> when you're hungover, you're usually really dehydrated also. So it's really replenishing to have coconut water and those amazing greens. Yeah. And that coconut water has a lot of great electrolytes in it. So that's how it helps you out. And if you're buying coconut water from the store, just make sure it's an unsweetened one because sometimes they'll sneak some lots of added sugar in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the mint, that made me think I just made a batch of, um, non-caffeinated I mixed raspberry tea and non-caffeinated mint tea and it turned out really good so that things like that count as your water goal as well as long as they're not caffeinated and it's not alcoholic and there's no added sugar it all goes towards your water goals um and we just had a question pop through that is very timely how much water should I drink per day and so a good estimate is half your body weight in ounces um so if you're 150 pounds about 75 ounces per day would be your would be your goal Good question. All right, so something else we can do in the summer is get outside. Um, vitamin D is our sunshine vitamin and vitamin D is synthesized by sun exposure. Um, so it's really our best natural source of vitamin D. Um, many people are deficient and this is a, could be a good reason why is because we're not outside as often as we um, once were or once or should be. Um, so the recommendation there is to be outside anywhere from five to 30 minutes, at least two times per week, to allow your body to synthesize that vitamin D sufficiently. Um, and about 25% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D and it's a big one. Vitamin D is very important and we're learning more and more about its importance. Um, so it's definitely one that we wanna make sure we have enough of and it's within normal limits. Um, spending out outside time with family, making it that social connected interpersonal relationship experience is something that will also aid into your overall well-being outside of that vitamin D. Um, and we certainly don't want to forget about that sunscreen, um, even though if we're wearing sunscreen, vitamin D isn't syn synthesized, but if we are in the sun regularly, we do want to make sure that we're protecting ourselves as well. So finding that, finding that balance as usual. Okay, and foods that can keep you cool. Um, again, it, it's hot, it's August. We know how hot it is, especially here in Florida. I'll say it again. Um, but a lot of these foods have the ability to um, keep us feeling cool, light, refreshed, and certainly aid in our hydration. Um, so those water-rich vegetables and fruits like cucumber slices dipped in hummus, adding some protein and adding some healthy fat to it through the hummus will help it be a little bit more of a sustainable snack for you and keeping you a little bit, um, a little bit fuller longer. Same thing with the apple slices and the peanut butter. Greek yogurt topped with berries and almonds is a great snack to have. Frozen grapes, those are huge in my house. We go through oh, frozen I grapes love frozen very grapes. quickly. Yeah. Do you prefer oh. red frozen grapes or green frozen grapes? Green. We prefer red here. So really? yep. Yep. So we don't really have red grapes though. We have more like the the like really purple ones. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um so yeah, so you can you have to try what, what color grape you prefer, but they're all really good and it's super satisfying as a sweet snack during the, the hot months. Um, smoothies, we've talked a little bit about smoothies already, smoothie bowls, um, 
uh, you can certainly make those and those are very satisfying for, for a sweet cooling treat um, during these hot months. All right, I am going to pass it over to Sophie so she can go through some ways to stay healthy season to season. Hi, everyone. Yeah, so I mean, season to season, it's really about um, being conscious of, I mean, I want to go back to the very beginning where we talked about wellness in general, and that health is not just about what you're putting in your body. It's about so many other things. So routines can really, I call them rituals, also routines. Um, having something that can lock you in every day to feel like your best self. Cause a lot of times we're traveling, we are maybe going on airplanes, we're out of routines and rituals, we're out of schedules. So what can you do every day? And this is different for everyone. Mm -hmm. So um, for me having like literally 10 minutes to myself in the morning without kids and without distractions to so just be by myself, it might be sitting, be sitting in the sun. Um, it might be doing a meditation. It might be moving my body a little bit, but I just ask myself what my body's needing and then go from there. Um, obviously, if I can get a little more time than that to myself, I prefer that. But, but realistically speaking, 10 minutes can completely shift my mood and make me really feel like the best version of me. Um, I'll do the same thing if we're traveling a lot. We always travel to Israel in the summer because my husband's Israeli and his family's there it's a big travel day on both sides. Sometimes it's up to two days of just intense travel transitions. It's a lot with the kids. So I'll sneak away and have my husband stay with the kids and I'll just take like 20 minutes at the airport and go find a quiet corner and do my routines and rituals just so I really feel um, like I can show up as my best self. Um, it can be, you know, if you're at home or on the road, it could be like a certain type of latte or smoothie or you know, I always pretty much have the same superfood coffee every day, or like I said, the sunshine drops, which have chlorophyll. I've been drinking something like that for like almost 20 years now. And it's something that always makes me feel healthier. And it might be, you know, very much placebo, but it, like to me, all, it, as long as it works, that's all that matters. Yeah. Um, yeah taking time, like I said, for yourself, um, but also balancing that social time because summer, summer is very sunshiny and extroverted and there's a lot of events and parties and the days are longer. So to balance all that, you have to actually consciously carve out the alone time and the solo time because it probably won't just happen. Um, you know, it might be like event after event or, um, being at the beach all day and then going straight into a barbecue or who knows what it is. There's just a lot more hours in the day to fill up with stuff. And it's really, really important to just balance that social time with time to yourself to just whatever feels right to you. I don't always like to um, prescribe something. I think it's really intuitive. So it might be moving your body. It might be um, journaling. It might be taking a bath um, or maybe none of those things sound good in that moment. And all you want to do is like Netflix and chill. That's also really important. Like sometimes for me and my well being, I just want to shut out the world and just not have to think. So something passive like that is really nice or reading a book um, and just allowing, allowing yourself to have that sort of time. Um, so in the summertime, um, it's really nice. We kind of talked about this, but um, not necessarily sticking to a strict schedule, but making sure that you're like, okay, every day before bed, I'm going to do this thing to wind down or have this nighttime routine. Um, maybe it's in the morning, maybe it's a few times a day where you have five minutes to take a few deep breaths. It can make such a big difference. Um, keeping a journal is awesome. You can keep it in your phone. If you're not someone that likes to write, I personally love having a written journal. Mm -hmm. It really allows me to just connect to myself in a more intimate way. Um, and self-care is like wellness. It's not a one size fits all thing. So really figuring out like, what are the things that fill my own cup? What feels good? Um, you know, maybe it's a certain mantra, maybe it's a certain, uh, it could be really anything like taking a shower and just allowing like the energy of the day to just wipe off of you. Mm -hmm. Like figuring out what works for you and trying a lot of different things so that you can see what fits and then what makes the most impact for you. 
Um, and then holding yourself accountable is a big thing. No one else is going to do that for you. So it's really important that you commit to whatever it is that's important to you to feel your best. So maybe it's 30 minutes working out in the morning. Maybe it's a walk every single day. Maybe it's a certain number of steps. I have an Apple watch and having the steps has actually really helped me because I'm a really active person. Um, but I, I don't necessarily get a lot of walking time. And so it's allowed me to have that conscious, like connection of, Oh, I've only walked 5,000 steps today. I want to walk more and be more active. Mm -hmm. So in addition to an, a workout, I try and get 10,000 steps a day. And that's my own accountability and, you know, setting those things on my phone, on my phone and my watch allow me to have certain goals. And I'm not hard on myself when I don't get them, but I use it as kind of like a point of reference. Um, and always finding out your why that's really important to me in all things, knowing the purpose behind it. Um, because if you can really connect to the why behind why you're doing something, then it helps it lock in and helps you stay more accountable. So for example, like if you're just doing something because you want to lose weight, that might be enough of, of a why for you. For me, I might just be like, eh, what's it really matter? Like what's, what's three extra pounds? What's this or that? So for me, locking into something like, I want to feel my best self at my sister's wedding, or I want to be strong and healthy for my kids so that I live a really long life. So figuring out what your why is, um, if it's something more like meditation, it could be like, I want to be a more calm, grounded version of myself. So really figuring out what that why is for you so that it can help you stick to it. Um, so these are different ideas to consider, um, maybe trying some new hobbies. Like, have you have always wanted to try tennis? Um, maybe what your best friend loves to run. Maybe you could try running with her. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be something too crazy. Um, I've also really liked starting to do watercoloring and I just challenged myself with my kids to a 30 day challenge. And we did a few days before we left for travel. And when I get home, I'm really excited to pick up where we left off. I'm not very good at it, but it's really fun. And it feels very like we do it when the sun's kind of going down. And like when you're, you've got those extra hours in the day, but you're maybe too tired to be active. We just sit and we started watercoloring and it's really, really nice. So finding new hobbies, new interests, things that make you excited. Um, we talked about gratitude in the beginning. I love to write down gratitudes or think about gratitudes before bed. If I'm feeling anxious, um, there's so many things to be grateful for. And if you can start at a really basic level, uh, like food in your fridge and a roof over your head and loving relationships, it can really help you, you know, lock back into the reality of how privileged you really are. And um, a lot of people like doing it in the morning. My husband writes in a, in a five minute journal every morning and writes his gratitudes. My kids have a five minute journal. It's actually sitting right here. And it's really helpful for them to just to take that five minutes to just remember like why they have such a good life. Um, social media, social media is a big one. Um, my full-time career is on social media. So if anyone understands this battle, it's me. Um, and for me, having boundaries is, is the most important thing. I have time boundaries on my phone. It automatically goes off and tells me, you know, you've hit your limit for the day. Um, I personally have a team that does a lot of things with me so that I can, I don't have to focus on the things that don't bring me joy. So I love to connect with my community online, but I don't necessarily want to like post certain things and, um, be on there too long. So, you know, picking and choosing wisely and also being really, really super aware of who it is you're following, who is showing up on your feed and continuously editing that. Um, really like intensely, like every few weeks looking through and making sure that no one's um, kind of out of alignment for where you're going and what your why is for why you're on social media in the first place. Most of us are not on social media to compare ourselves and feel crappier. We're on social media to feel better, to feel inspired, to learn new things. So make sure that the people you're following are aligned with that. Um, yeah. Uh, so creating habits that benefit your well-being, really creating a life. It, this can be very slow, you know, like not necessarily focusing on what you're taking out, but focusing on what you're what you want to create. So 
adding in a lot of magic, adding in really healthy relationships and people that make you feel good and experiences in your environment. And um, like we said, even like decluttering one part of your house for 10 minutes a day can make a huge difference on your well being. Um, and the last thing is just checking in on your health and track over time. So testing and tracking your health to stay in the know about your well being. Um, just really, you know, making sure that you're staying on top of this and um, not letting anything fall behind. Awesome. Thank you. Those are some really great tips in there. That social media one is tricky, right? It's like, mm. and just, but it's vital. It is technology in general. I know my family is not in Florida, so it's a great way to connect with them, but so many times it interferes with those connections too. So again, it's, yeah. You know, finding, finding that balance for sure, but you definitely provided some great tips. Thank you. Um, okay. So there's, we went over a lot of different things that you can do to be proactive about your well being, um, And I think it's really just focusing on what resonated with you today. Uh, where are you? Where are you looking to go? And what really stood out to you today? That's the best place to start. Don't feel like you need to tackle everything that we talked about. But if there were a couple of things that really, um, like I said, resonated with you, start there. Um, and that will help you on your journey to well-being, um, focusing on the fundamentals, things like getting good quality sleep, um, you know, as adults, we should have like seven to nine hours of good quality sleep. Um, if you're consistently getting less than seven hours of sleep a night, then it could lead to different, to, to poor health outcomes. Um, so even if it's just trying to go to bed at the same time every night, um, and even if it's 20 minutes early, 30 minutes earlier, um, just moving into that right direction, connecting with loved ones and focusing on that social connectedness, staying active, um, not only physically active, but mentally active as as well, um, paying attention to the present, being super mindful in the things that you're doing, and um, last but certainly not least, uh, nourishing your body with those nutrient dense or superfoods that we discussed. Okay, so this tells us a little bit about your company. Yeah, so my company is called Philosophy, um, and I created it oof, like 10 years ago now, 11 years ago when I was pregnant with my first child and I really couldn't keep much down nutritionally. So I started with my first product, which was green dream. I couldn't find any sort of plant-based protein that didn't have sugar in it, stevia in it, fillers. Um, yeah, just like a lot of products out there have junk in it and they focus, they kind of like manipulate and focus on a certain, they'll be like, Oh, with spirulina and it has the teeniest, tiniest bit of spirulina and then all these other fillers in it. So that's kind of the idea behind it is I selfishly wanted these superfoods for myself. I was feeding my body, nourishing my body with these superfoods every single day. Like I said, the chlorophyll and the mint. I've been doing since I was 19 when I was traveling the world by myself and it would help me feel grounded. So now I have a product called Sunshine Drops, which is exactly those ingredients that I would put in my water 20 years ago. So um, it's evolved from there. We have a lot of really functional, amazing foods. We have reset programs that are focused on a saturation of beautiful nutrients, not a depletion. So instead of saying like, you can't have all of this and we're restricting all of this and, and feeling depleted, you're actually getting an abundance of beautiful foods and superfoods and it allows your body a, a reset and a, and a little break from um, the normal foods that may be, you know, doing a little experiment with yourself and figuring out what works and doesn't work. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the thing for us is just really clean superfoods from all over the world, um, but not too many in each product so that you can really get all of the ingredients um, benefits from it. That's awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Sounds great. Okay. And obviously with Let's Get Checked, we offer um, different wellness testing um, as a part of uh, the different diagnostic tests that we do. Um, wellness tests include vitamin tests, micronutrient tests, and mineral tests. We also have uh, cortisol tests. We have blood sugar testing, um, cholesterol level testing. Um, and those are really just a couple of the 30 plus different tests that we offer. Um, so you definitely want to go over to letsgetcheck.com and see our full offering and being with us tonight as an attendee, we have, um, 
a promo code for you to use to get 30% off at Let's Get Checked and with at the philosophy um, and just have to type in wellness 30 and it will get 30% off or just for joining with us tonight. And um, hopefully that's not the only thing that you're taking away from this session. Um, I think that we went through a lot of great areas of wellness um, and hopefully you all feel good about the information that you got and feel better about adding it to wherever you are in your wellness journey. So it looks like we still have um, a few minutes that we can do some questions. Um, so I know I do apologize that the chat feature wasn't working as we had anticipated it, um, but please feel free to um, send your questions in through Instagram, um, direct message, or even email. We have some people behind scenes that can surface those questions to us. Um, but we can start with some of these that we have received as well. Um, feel free to take a look and Sophie, if there's one that you want to tackle, have at it. I'll go ahead and read through some of them as well. So what are some signs of an unhealthy gut? We, I can start there. Um, so there's a lot of signs of an unhealthy gut. Um, you know, decreased immunity is a big one fatigue, um, there's connection with other chronic disease and how your body is, is functioning, um, you know, if they're bloating, IBS, um, not getting answers to, uh, um, to different symptoms that you're feeling. Um, a lot of times it can tie back to that, to that gut health. We're seeing connections with mood, like I mentioned with, um, Alzheimer's and different cognitive areas as well. Um, so there is a long laundry list of possible signs and symptoms that can lead back to an imbalance in your gut microbiome. Um, and really focusing on, um, you know, feeling good about getting that balance in your favor can help roll out some of those symptoms for you as well. Someone said, what's your favorite summer snack? Your favorite summer snack. Mm -hmm. I think we pretty, we, we said that the, the frozen grapes were high up on our list in both of our households. <laughs> yeah. We love just cutting in a watermelon and would just eat it in one sitting. The whole family just eats the whole watermelon. I love um, having watermelon with feta and mint. Mm -hmm. Um, I love having peaches grilled or peaches in a salad. Um, I like just incorporating summer fruits and veggies just into as many things as I can, um, and keeping it pretty simple. Yeah, definitely. I think smoothies are a big one here yeah. as well. Um, okay. yeah, it's a good way to, to kind of, um, you know, get a light meal in and, and cool off a bit as well. Um, I love a tropical smoothie with pineapple and mango and banana and coconut yeah. water and then. If I have some greens, throwing those greens in there and then turning it into a green smoothie as well. Um, and it's very refreshing. So that's a that's a fantastic summer snack to have as well. Yeah. We love acai bowls too. Yep. Yep. And they're getting easier to make at home, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So vitamin D rich foods, um, that's a tough one. Uh, vitamin D isn't found um, prominently in a lot of foods. Um, so there's kind of scarce amounts in some, but the main thing would be foods that are fortified with vitamin D. Um, a lot of times uh, dairy products and are fortified, eggs are fortified, um, and non-dairy um, milk alternatives are fortified a lot with vitamin D as well. Um, like I said, the main way natural source for vitamin D is through the sun exposure, excuse me. And how can I incorporate movement into my day when I don't have the energy to do so? Um, that's a tough one. I'm sure you hear a lot of Sophie, but sometimes yeah. it's just getting started with something. Um, yeah. you know, we talked about listening to your body and experimenting with different things. Um, and even if it is just committing to a 10 minute walk after your lunch meal, um, and if you only get five minutes in that day, then that's okay. But starting somewhere and moving towards that um, movement goal each day, um, is the best way to get started. Yeah. And I think also like not taking the pressure off of it, looking like a certain thing. Um, like I've always done workouts in the most random moments. Like I'll like when I'm done washing my face, like do some squats or I'm brushing my teeth and I'll like be doing leg lifts. Like I just stay active throughout the day. I might not get a work, a workout in that mm -hmm. day, 
but I'll like stand up while I'm doing something. And while I'm standing up on my computer at the, at the counter, I'll like be like doing something with my legs, like a, some type of a workout or, um, you know, in the middle of the day, if I'm feeling a little off, I'll like go into like a headstand, obviously not everyone can do a headstand, but the idea is just like incorporating it into your day instead of it being like, I think it could be overwhelming to say, I'm going to work out for an hour. That's, Mm -hmm. that's daunting for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So, um, even just looking at your health app on your phone, if you haven't, if you have an iPhone, look at how many steps you actually get on average and then just up it by 1500 steps and start there. And then in like two weeks, add it to 3000 more steps from where you are now, or 1500 more from where you are in two weeks and just keep adding on. And you'd be surprised how good you feel from just that little bit more walking a day. And maybe you do a little challenge, like add in some lunges here and there, add in some push-ups. Um, the idea is to feel strong, to um, to move our bodies, to not be stagnant for too long. So it doesn't have to look like anything specific, do things that feel good. And, you know, it's nice to just get outside because then you're getting vitamin D too. So maybe go on a walk by the beach. If you're lucky enough to live near a beach or, you know, a pond or duck pond, or go to the park, go on a hike. Um, it doesn't have to be too strenuous, take your time and just start to build endurance that way. Absolutely. Those are some good tips there. Check the chat, see if we have any other questions that have come in. Okay, let's see some here. Um, I always find myself skipping lunch, but know that I shouldn't. What are some quick meal ideas um, that I can make at home? Um, One of the quickest things that you can make at home is is leftovers. Um, So setting yourself up for some healthy dinner meals um, and having some leftover for the next day at lunch is always a good idea. Um, I also think like not getting stuck into like what a traditional meal looks like, Um, you know, focusing on some good lean protein, um, sticking in some fruits and vegetables and having some healthy fats is really the structure that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So it doesn't have to be, you know, I think people get hung up on what conventional meals look like. um, And it doesn't need to look like that. It can sometimes be a hard boiled egg and a banana and a handful of almonds. And that was my lunch. And yeah, like sometimes I'm just, just forget, like I, I, I can't not eat or I'm not a good person to be around, (laughs) but I'll sometimes just stand at my counter while I'm working don't recommend it. Definitely sit down and have a meal if you can, but it's better to eat something than nothing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll just have like pita and hummus or like crackers and hummus and like an apple and like, at least it's better than nothing. And I'm getting fiber. I'm getting some protein. I'm getting some really good nutrients in my body. And, um, it keeps your brain firing. If you, if you go too long between meals, it like really just affects your, your focus and your brain. 100%. Yep, absolutely. Well, I think we're at our our, our hour now. So thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Sophie, to have you alongside during this session. And thank you to all the attendees that were able to come tonight. I do apologize for any of the issues that we had with the chat box. Um, We will definitely be sharing a recording of this event tomorrow, and we'll send out an email with that recording as well as the discount code that you can use um, at either of our companies. Companies, and we definitely welcome you to check those out and take advantage of that discount code. Um, and we look forward to our next event. Yes. And if you have any questions about philosophy specific and or maybe you're between products or just have any questions for me at all, feel free to DM. I, um, I love connecting with people in that way. So I'm Sophie.Jaffe on Instagram. Excellent. Thank you. And we have our uh, contact here, a great way to email us and we'll be sure to get back to you 